Yeah, 1996 is almost 20 years ago, and if you look back compared to today, it was almost primitive. At that time, the awareness about organ donation was much less. Uh, we could only get organs from our own hospital, and uh, it was very sporadic. At best, you would have three or four donations in a year, and there was no concept of organ sharing. And it was a matter of great luck whether a patient got an organ or not. We didn't have good artificial heart pumps to keep the patients alive till an organ was found. So we had to transplant them as soon as we got an organ, regardless of the condition they were in. So uh, the outcomes in those days were not uh, as good as they are today. And compared to that, we've come a very long way. Okay, organ donation from 1996 uh, till maybe around 2007 was still sporadic. Uh, though I think in 2001 or two, we had started the beginning of organ sharing amongst the four or five hospitals which are doing transplants. But I think in the year 2007 or 8, the government of the state got actively involved and formulated a transplant committee. And uh, the participating hospitals started uh, including the government hospitals as well. And it became mandatory for all the uh, hospitals in which organ a brain dead donors were available to inform the central committee and they started processing the distribution of organs. In addition, if you had a patient who's waiting uh, for a transplant, we had to get it registered in the um, central committee and the, and the allocation of organs was done by this committee. And so it's become much more transparent. Your name is, or the name of your patient is in the waiting list. It's available on the web for anyone to see with an appropriate password. And uh, Along the pattern of the UNO system, which is practiced in the United States, we have a category of allocation of organs, which depends upon the seriousness of the patient's condition, uh, his seniority in the waiting list in terms of when he was uh, first registered, uh, and the uh, blood group. And there's a well-defined uh, hierarchy in terms of organ uh, distribution. The first choice of the organ goes to the hospital which generates the organ. The second choice is to the city. The ch third choice is to the state, and the fourth choice is to the rest of the country, and foreigners come the fifth. So it's very uh, well defined, and uh, there is very little conflict of interest in, in such a system. Actually, India is one of the few countries where uh, especially heart and lungs are still available for foreigners. So we have um, patients coming in from several countries, including from uh, Europe, including from uh, Middle East and including from uh, uh, far, you know, uh, Singapore, Malaysia and other places and some from the U.S. as well. See, one of the peculiarities of the heart as compared to, say, a kidney is that it can survive only uh, for four hours without blood supply. And this four hours includes the time it takes to transport the organ from one place to the other and the time it takes to stitch the organ into the recipient. So we are constrained by time. So uh, if a donor is available in one city and the best or appropriate recipient for that heart is in another city, the transporting the organ becomes a huge, huge challenge. And as a consequence, several organs are being wasted. We have used both air ambulances and commercial flights to transport organs. In the last one year alone, we have used it almost 12 times. And the, the longest distance we have used is almost 700 kilometers. We have flown in an organ from Hyderabad, from Vijayawada, from Vishakhapatnam, from Cochin, from Bangalore to Chennai. And the, it also takes time within the city from the hospital to go to the airport. And then when they arrive in Chennai from the airport to the, to the hospital. And the inner city traffic, you know, is, is, is very crowded and uh, time consuming in our countries. So we have used, in fact, we were the first to start this concept of green corridor in India as, as far back as 2009 when we uh, requested the police to give us a police escort so that they could cut through the traffic. Now I'm glad to see that it's being followed by the rest of the country. And uh, despite this, the physical infrastructure is still uh, not evolved in India. Uh, increasingly now, uh, organ donations in Tamil Nadu are happening in smaller towns. And some of them don't have night landing facilities, some of them don't have airports. So a challenge is still to be able to reach these organs to big cities in time for them to be utilized. I think one of the major challenges and improvements as I see it would be in duration for which the hearts can be preserved. Already technology exists 
by which the organs can be preserved for six to seven hours. I think the next five years, it would be commonplace to see them being stored for up to 24 hours, if not longer. If that happens, then you would be in a position to fly an organ, say, from Trivandrum up to Srinagar. So you could truly have it, an intermingling of hearts of the country, uh, in a poetic sense. But in real terms, you could have a trans you know, a subcontinental transfer of organs. The, uh, even if you didn't transfer the organs long distances, it allows a very vital thing. At this point in time, in heart, we're not able to do HLA typing or tissue matching to match the best organ for the best recipient because we don't have time. But imagine if he had six or seven or eight hours, then we would be able to choose the best possible recipient for the organ. If you look at the long-term results of heart transplantation, approximately one-third of patients survive more than 30 years. So it's a mystery as to why one third can survive for such long periods of time and the others don't. So clearly it's something to do with uh, the immunocompatibility of the donor and the recipient. So if he had time to do this test, the long-term results would dramatically improve and I think that's exciting. We have now uh, uh, several NGOs which are involved. So in, uh, in most of the leading hospitals, including in public hospitals, we have grief counselors who are trained in how to approach the families of brain dead patients for organ donation. It seems to be working very well.